good evening. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And please excuse my voice. Stop smoking. Um, as Phyllis was kind enough to say, I taught for over 40 years at Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts was the last half of my career, 20 years. When I got to uh, teaching high school, I was teaching commercial art, advertising design, and graphics, illustration. With that in mind, my entire, uh, excuse me, my entire curriculum was based on what you saw on the uh, flyers that you found at your seats. <coughs> my whole purpose with my students was to teach the whole child, not just about art, but about life and how to successfully make their journey into the adult world beyond the bubble of our studio. So it was all about giving back to the community, which provided an amazing place to go to school. The uh, Jewish Federation of Philadelphia and the sons and daughters of Holocaust survivors sponsor a contest every year in the performing and visual arts, and it was dedicated in honor of and in commemoration of Mordechai and the Lelich. How many people know that name? <coughs> he was the young Mordechai and the Lelich. He was the young leader of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. I don't have many of these left, but here's a biography of his life and his time in, in Warsaw. I have a few that I can lend to you to, uh, to read. And um, uh, bought him borrow and uh, Another thing I used as a reference work is the actual is the actual congressional record on what Eisenhower and the Allied troops found when they entered the camps. So if you want to read this, it's very enlightening. Unbelievable. As as Eisenhower said, when he opened the first camp, when he arrived at one of the first camps, he said to his other generals, get congressmen here, because somewhere down the line, some bastard is going to say it never happened. Very prolific. I asked my students, if they ever heard of the word Holocaust, one or two, maybe, each year, raised their hand. My student body was made up of little Irish kids from South Philadelphia, Italians, African Americans, lots of Asian kids, very few, for whatever reason very few Jewish students in the visual arts community. They were in either drama, theater arts, dance, or music, creative writing. But even so, the students responded to my asking them to watch a film called Genocide. This is how I introduced the Holocaust to them. This is an amazing film. It was produced by the um, Simon Biesenthal Center in Los Angeles. And it's narrated by Elizabeth Taylor and Orson Welles. And it's not just about the camps. The film starts out in the uh, little 
shtetls of Eastern Europe and enlightened the Jewish populations there all the way up from prior to 1933 through 1945. It's an amazing film. I have one copy. If you want some time, we can arrange either a showing here or if you have a DVR, I'd be happy to lend it to you. I used other videos. A great source, of course, is the National Holocaust Museum in Washington. You get amazing things online. I showed them this film, Genocide. And it was interesting to see the reactions of these students, especially the African-American African -American students. And they say, why am I sitting here watching this film? Until Jesse Owens was dissed by the mustached man when he won his track and field records and his gold medals. I also had two Jehovah Witnesses in my class who are amazing kids. Now, I'm going to show you this slide in a minute, but I want to let you know that before the students could touch pencil to paper, I brought in survivors to speak to the kids to talk about their own personal stories. Even as adults, we have trouble trying to figure out what six million men, or 11 million, or three million children who perished. The stories were incredible, and the student reactions were absolutely amazing. I taught this subject in 11th and 12th grade. They were a combined studio class. And uh, it's interesting, with all the other social issues on that sheet, when my 11th graders returned the following fall, as 12th graders, I told them, I showed them, and we talked about various issues that they could work on. And every student, every year, who became a 12th grader that worked on a Holocaust piece the year before, opted to do another one. Incredible. Some of these kids have gone on to do very well in the art world. I one student, you can look this name up, Barnaby Furnas, F-U-R-N-A-S, making seven figures for his artwork. I have students that I worked with in the music department. One is now the music director of the Newport Jazz Festival world-renowned jazz bassist, another world-renowned keyboard player, jazz keyboard player, um, is now traveling around the globe playing, making people happy. He's gotten all kinds of awards as a new jazz player in, the, uh, in that uh, music form. on. I'm going to stop talking. I may interrupt a minute or so during the slide presentation just to give you a little more background. But as you can see, if you looked at the alive work up here in the front, you can see now these are 15, 16, 17 year old kids. Look at the talent, the empathy, the compassion.
successful escape. So even some of the women who actually took it on their own to blow up the Queen Gloria in one of the camps. This piece was done on two layers of illustration board. Figures in the foreground are the waveform, the background.
This is an interesting piece. The young man that did this was a Russian immigrant. He did this piece as an 11th grader and then as a senior, he took the same image and made it into a video, animated video. Thank everybody for paying attention. I want to say uh, a big, give a big hug and kiss and thank you to Phyllis and Cheryl and the entire Adasa membership for uh, inviting me to come here and show these pieces to you. Over 17. Over 17 years that I taught this particular project, I probably, uh, the students produced probably close to 900 pieces of work. And a lot of the kids left, left the original pieces um, for me because they knew, knew I did a lot of lecturing around the uh, state of Pennsylvania colleges, universities, and uh, charity organizations. Thank you again for all coming out. <laughs> Just a couple. Yes, again. Were the majority of the artists teenagers? They were all 14, 15, 16, some 17 year olds. You can you can see the the talent and skill. I mean, these kids could have walked out of that high school and gotten a job doing illustrations anywhere. Rich, over how many years were those classes run? Uh, the kids playing? Was that just one year or over another? That's a a mixed bag of years. Um, I, I had a lot of the live art, but when we moved from Pennsylvania down here, the condo wouldn't hold all the work, so I do donated it. But as I said, over the years, close to 900 pieces were produced. Now in this competition, citywide uh, competition, my students, starting with the first year, took first, second, third, all the honorable mentions, and in the, in the uh, all the great categories, ninth, tenth, eleventh grade. Uh, yes. What exposure did they have to give them? You know, their thoughts on what to Well, the film was the kickoff. And then this this project, like very few other art class projects, took four months to complete from start to finish. They watched the film, they listened to survivors presentations. We did a lot of discussion in class. They also had to do their own personal research. I had hundreds of VHS tapes in those days of all kinds of uh, issues like the Holocaust, KKK, uh, racism, and they did the research using those idioms. They also, those who had computers, went online and did their own research. But again, they couldn't touch the piece for the final pieces until I saw four sketches, four different sketches, ideas. And uh, then they were off and running. And the, the, the interesting thing is, once they started this, they, they tackled it with the vigor I'd never seen before. 
I, during this time of the year, Yom HaShoah, I would bring a couple of students, a couple of student artists to our home. We'd have dinner and then we'd go to services so that the congregation could see the kids who were ca carrying on the tradition of keeping the Holocaust alive. The inspiration and the, the work that you did with all these teenage kids and to see the sensitivity of what they did in their work, it's hard to believe that they could pick up so much of this as a young person, and I think a great deal of it is because of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, they were my inspiration now. Richard, did you also have your students present their, their artwork in other mediums other than in regard to their uh, artwork, other in buildings and other murals and other uh, uh, mediums as far as uh, display? Well, we would, I would get calls from uh, small businesses who uh, went to advertising agencies to get logos and letterhead designs made and the costs were outrageous and uh, they would call me i say i'll give you a, a number of samples my student will this my students will design them if you like it you pay them part of the money went to the kids part of the money went to the uh, art department fund uh, we did uh, murals at a uh, children's hospital um, in a corner. The uh, wall was eight feet high, 80 feet long. And I had a number of kids put together one theme. And we would go after school three days a week to uh, finish the piece. And the interesting part was because it was a magnet school, these kids came from everywhere. They didn't come from the neighborhood, so to speak. So I would load them up in my station wagon. we drive out to the hospital. they do an hour and a half, two hours of work, jump in the station wagon, drive them back to the central part of the city so they could get transportation home. And uh, that took about three months of work. Yeah. Uh, the uh, fire department in Philadelphia ran a contest every year about fire safety. And uh, so uh, I got my kids involved. And uh, after a couple of years, they put us in a whole separate category. Uh, in the judging, it was us and then the rest of the city. <laughs> and again, we took all the prizes. And one day, the uh, firefighter who was involved, directly involved in the project came to me and said, if I provide the paint and, and the plywood, would you have your kids do these, reproduce them on four or five eight sheets of plywood, and they put them up at all the different stations around the city. We did a lot of that stuff. Yes? I was going to say, I have a dear friend who is a um, Holocaust survivor, and she goes uh, once a week to different schools to tell them about the Holocaust. And most of them don't even know what it is. They say it's a building in Washington or somewhere in Europe. They have no idea what the Holocaust is. And um, she tries to tell them of her experiences. I understand Steven Spielberg has made a, he is still photographing people which will go on to every Holocaust uh, museum in the world and will be shown out ad infinitum. 
uh, many years ago, we visited uh, six of the concentration camps. And the one thing that stood out and most in my mind as we looked at the ashes and the shoes and the jewelry and everything, someone behind me said, who was a Holocaust survivor, she said, you cannot picture what anything was like unless you know the smells. They could not recreate the smells of the Holocaust. And it's, it was unbelievable, and it is unbelievable, how many people have no idea what happened or cares. I, uh, I volunteered at an assisted living facility, which my, my wife was president of the auxiliary for uh, two years. And uh, I volunteered to show <coughs> films just to change their entertainment. And uh, I showed, uh, that when I first started, they were mostly interested in the Holocaust and Israel. And I showed this film. And at the end of the film, two young ladies came up to me to tell me and show me that they were survivors. Then they got into a interesting discussion amongst the two of them, comparing their camps. And one said to the other, that camp was like some of the camp. <laughs> My camp was a real camp. Now, I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Last question. It's actually not a question. It's actually, it's actually a response to, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, what you just said. My daughter is a sixth grade teacher, and part of her reading, what she speaks about every single year, and every semester when the school starts, is Ellie Wiesel's uh, book, Night. And she discusses it and has it in that classroom every single year. I just said So if there is education out there, and there are people still trying to how many people from New Jersey? New Jersey was the first state Department of Education that mandated a Holocaust education curriculum. I knew I was very close to the woman who got that off the ground. She was part of our Holocaust Education Committee. Kathy was very instrumental in getting, helping to get Pennsylvania to mandate the Holocaust curriculum. You'd be surprised how many school districts in the hinterlands that do a better job than in the urban communities. Okay, thank you again.